All right, here we are, Black Diamond Call, Monday, November 28th, 2016. I am your host, John Lavenia, and I am glad to be here with you live from Salt Lake City tonight where we're getting about a foot of snow and then two feet at the ski resorts up the mountain there. Exciting time for all of our winter sports enthusiasts, and especially after having virtually no snow at all for the first uh, few weeks of uh, autumn. And here we are approaching winter. And of course, on the Black Diamond Call, which is kind of a, uh, a snowy uh, picture that you may get in your mind as we uh, explore the, the summits of achievement here inside the uh, digital altitude community, as well as uh, throughout the, the top tier direct selling uh, industry, uh, we're going to talk about things each week that are uh, designed to accelerate your progress to becoming a top earner yourself. I know when I got started in this industry all those years ago, I looked for the top people and I interviewed them and I tagged along and I showed up where they showed up and I found out what they were doing and wouldn't you know it, I became a top earner myself. So that's what this call is about, is revealing the inner workings of top producers uh, in their businesses. And uh, typically each week we have a different uh, speaker, a different co-host. You guys are all exceedingly fortunate tonight that I'm going to be flying solo. I'm going to be giving you... Uh, what I think may turn into a bit of a rant over here because I got a lot of material rolling around in my head that I just had to get out. So I'm going to take this uh, this opportunity and this platform to do so. But before I get into that, let me uh, give our usual disclaimer that this call, uh, you're going to hear my opinion on stuff. Me, John Lavenia, this is how I work my businesses and uh, the companies that I run and all the stuff that I do here inside and outside Digital Altitude and that I have been doing for, for some decades. Uh, studying what I've been studying in terms of uh, personal growth psychology and success philosophy and things like that. I like to bring you uh, a very uh, uh, action-packed, uh, relevant approach to, to business and to life. So uh, the rules are take what you like and leave the rest. Hopefully you'll find some way to, to uh, put into use the things that I share with you here tonight. And, uh, and of course, if I say anything that offends you, You'll get over it. That's just how I roll. Uh, I'd rather help people get results and maybe get a little bit uncomfortable than help people stay comfy and stay broke at the same time. So that's what this call is about, is uh, delivering to you some ideas that have made me millions of dollars. So that's what we're going to talk about. And then I'm going to take uh, questions at the end. We can have questions and comments at the end. So if you are joining us live, uh, either via the, the free conference call app or via a phone or Skype or whatever mechanism, we will have a Q&A session uh, at the end. So here's what's coming on uh, my brain for tonight. I wanted to deliver to you, and I do intend to deliver to you, several pointers which I think uh, will separate you from the mass mediocrity that we see not only inside society, but even sometimes inside our direct selling and home-based business space, which so many people are uh, are participating in to one degree or another. You know, after all, the the uh, the idea of having everything you need provided for you at a job that's been debunked to a large degree for anyone who's willing to look. And of course, that's not everybody. Uh, some people will will live their life and just uh, you know have their job, and uh, you know after forty years they get the uh, you know the retirement and. You know, I guess get on uh, Social Security if they're in the United States or some sort of a, a group uh, public assistance program or retire perhaps with a little bit of savings uh, as inflation continues to go up and, you know, what wasn't enough before, now they're going to live on even less. And that's the sort of mediocrity, that's the sort of uh, what I call a life of concession that I don't believe that anybody who's opted in to a program, certainly like Digital Altitude, I don't believe that you're willing to settle for that. I, I believe that you're you're looking to reach high above mediocrity. And so it's with that level of respect and acknowledgement that I want to deliver this conversation. And at the same time, I could see people who have opted in. They have found their way into entrepreneurship, into uh, online business and marketing, and even in, in particular into digital altitude, who have not quite made the mental transition into entrepreneurship, uh, the transition out of employee mindset into uh, entrepreneur mindset. It's a big jump. I'm going to tell you a story. Okay, and this is a story that uh, I sometimes tell in workshops and live events. But I'm going to tell it to you now because I think it illuminates the point. And uh, so I want you to picture walking down the street and seeing a bum sitting on the corner. And this bum is begging for coins, begging for change. 
money, handouts. Give me something. I'm not. I'm not working. I, I want uh, money. I want uh, handouts. Uh, give that to me. And uh, you see people giving them, uh, you know, change, pocket change, or what have what have you. And then uh, one day, this this person walks up to the bum, and uh, the bum asks them for for money. And the person says, "You know what? I'm not going to give you money, but I'm going to do something even better for you. I'm going to help you improve your life. I'm going to get you uh, cleaned up." Okay, uh, you look like uh, you could use a job, right? So uh, at my, my work, you see, they've got uh, an opening for a, uh, an entry-level position, a janitor or some such position where you can, uh, you can get started today. We've got this opening. And, uh, of course, you're going to need a, um, you know, a shower and maybe a shave. And uh, you look like you're about my size in terms of clothing. So, you know, I've got some extra clothes that you can, you can use, you know, while you're getting back on your feet. And this is good. Your life is going to improve. You'll be employed. You'll be a productive member of society, right? You'll have some clean clothes to wear. You won't stink. This is what a great opportunity. Now, anybody looking at this scenario, like if you're looking at it right now in your mind's eye, you're thinking, what a great opportunity for the bum. They get to, they get to leave the street corner. They get to uh, go have a job. What a great uh, you know person this is. This good Samaritan who's thinking beyond you know just giving him enough money to buy half a cup of coffee or something, and uh, giving him an opportunity. What a great opportunity. But you know what most bums would say if confronted with that situation? Not thank you, not, oh, man, this is my lucky day. No, 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 no. You know what they would say? They would say, but then somebody else is going to get my corner. This is a good corner. I get a lot of handouts on this corner, and I see across the street there, there's the other bomb over there. who He's getting not as many handouts as me. That's not as good of a corner. If I leave this street corner, that other bomb is going to come and take my corner, and then I won't have this corner anymore. Now, does that sound ridiculous? Well, think about this. The leap from bum on the street to employed productive member of society seems like a pretty big leap. However, my friends, the leap from employed productive member of society to successful entrepreneur is an even bigger leap. Think about this. How many people cling to their comfort zones of the known, right? This is we're talking about things that are familiar. We know how to work a job. We know how to show up and do what we're told and do enough to not get fired and to earn a certain amount of money to pay our bills almost on time and, and all this, right? Uh, to leap from that so-called security or at least familiarity into the realm of the unknown, right? Which is where all of our goals reside, by the way. If you already knew how to reach your goals, you would have already reached them. This is a scary thing for a lot of people. Who's going to get your corner? Who's going to get your job, especially if you've uh, you've got the idea that there's security in a job. You know, there was a time back in the, the Industrial Revolution we're talking about here. There was a time prior to the Industrial Revolution where people had to be uh, personally marketable. Personally marketable. Here's what I mean by that. So you've got the blacksmith, and they live in the town where they are the blacksmith. And uh, they have to go out today, and they've got a job, you see. The job is to make the horseshoes for the horse guy who uh, lives down the cobblestone street, and his horse needs shoes. So his job is to make the shoes for the horse guy. And that's his job today, today. Now, tomorrow, he has to go out and get another job, and this job is making the, uh, the latches for the fence, right, the iron works, the needed uh, you know, hinges and uh, latches or whatever, uh, I'm not a blacksmith, obviously, but he has, to, he has to go get another job tomorrow, maybe a couple of jobs. And so the blacksmith had to be personally marketable in the marketplace to get jobs, plural. Okay, now he does good work. He's, he's got good workmanship. He secures more jobs. Maybe even he becomes a famous blacksmith and people come from other villages to, uh, to get his fine iron work. And so that is called personal marketability. Then the Industrial Revolution happened, which had a lot of benefits. It also had some side effects. One of those side effects was you no longer have to be personally marketable beyond marketing yourself one time to an employer who will then give you a job, singular, singular, job, not jobs, a singular job, and they have an agenda, and you will follow that agenda. You will do your job. You will not 
uh, you will not fight that system, right? You are paid a certain amount to do a job that has been predetermined for you. You no longer have to be personally marketable. You have to do enough to not get fired. Do you see the shift? Do you see what happened? We went from self-dependence, more of an entrepreneurial mindset, to other dependence. Now we're, uh, our, our survival is based on an outside agenda. Okay, so you see how this could diminish one's entrepreneurial drive. Now let's fast forward 80 years. Okay, here we are, 2016, and we've got people oh, every day, every day, people waking up to the reality that they are, their, their corner is not so secure, right? And then downsizing and uh, with all the different circumstances that people are going through living the job life. Now, I'm not saying that everyone's cut out to be an entrepreneur. Yes, there are some very good things about uh, post-industrial, uh, you know, corporate America or whatever you want to call it. Okay, people, uh, you know, have a certain level of, uh, of understanding. Some people uh, will, will be best suited by being employed uh, by another man. Okay, that's, that's fine. That's fine. But I'm not, those aren't people listening to this conversation right now, right? If you're in this conversation, you're an entrepreneur. You're here inside Digital Altitude. So since that's the audience, here's what I already know about you. I already know that uh, you see that the security that uh, you seek for yourself, your family, your financial independence, you see that that is something that comes from self-reliance, that comes from being personally marketable. That is what is being rehabilitated in companies like this. And I can't say that too, too, uh, too sternly because I don't know that there are many companies like this. Digital Altitude, in my assessment, is head and shoulders above the vast majority of stuff that you'll find online. I mean, there's a million ways to spend your time and that you've chosen this. Bravo. Bravo to you. However, an opportunity of this magnitude uh, demands entrepreneurship of equal magnitude. You know, you can go join 10 million different things right now. And there's a million distractions online. You can go pay the $10 for the, vi the viral pre-launch and, the, you know, the Ponzi scheme and the money games and the chain letters. And uh, you don't have to do a damn thing. You just sit on your ass. And our magical system, you see, will do everything for you because, again, you're not the answer, right? These special people who already have the answer over here, they're the special people. Okay, and you can continue to be, not cause, but the effect. You can continue to be the effect of an outside agenda. You see how seductive this is? This is just like the employee mindset that keeps people in jobs until they die broke. That's the employee mindset. I am not special. I am not cause. I am effect. And you special few people over here, your cause, and do for me what I cannot or am not willing to do for myself. You see what kind of trap that is? Very seductive. Okay? Do it for me. Think for me. Tell me my agenda. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that you shouldn't learn. Certainly, we're in an educational program. Our entire product line is about empowering you to be, do, and have more in terms of being someone who can get what you want out of life and out of uh, society and commerce and exchanging with other people. Right? This is, again, about rehabilitating personal marketability. Okay? But why do people, why are people attracted to you? Okay? I'm talking about you individually. Why are people attracted to you and the offer that you're putting forth? Because they, they can get started with Digital Altitude or any other thing with any other person. There's thousands of people just inside Digital Altitude. There's thousands of people who are marketing this opportunity. Why should somebody get started with you? Have you ever asked yourself that question? You know, you are a very important asset to the potential transaction that could take place should someone choose to participate with you. You are an important asset to that. You. And nobody can, can, uh, can replace you in that. There is what's called a unique selling proposition, which is a pretty big topic, which we can't cover in its entirety. This would take a, a whole weekend to cover. And I'm sure we'll cover parts of it in, um, you know, at our upcoming events like Ascend and Peak. Okay, but a unique selling proposition, uh, what that is, is a reason that somebody should buy from you specifically and why they should do it right now and why they should not buy from your competition and why they should not just sit there and do nothing or put off making the decision or anything like that. If you can answer this question, 
then you'll come up with uh, some semblance of a unique selling proposition. And the question is, why should I buy from you right now and not any of your competitors and not just sit here and do nothing, right? Pretty big question. It, it takes companies sometimes years to answer that question. And sometimes they have to answer it again, right, because they haven't quite hit the mark. We're talking about a point of differentiation in the marketplace. What sets you apart from all the other things people could potentially do? What is it that set digital altitude apart from all the other things that you could have signed up to do? Well, uh, you know, there's a lot of things, right? Now I hear about them all the time when I'm talking to students, uh, you know, here inside the, you know, the uh, Aspire system and all this, right? I get the wonderful feedback, okay? But here's what I can tell you is that you're a part of that. You are a part of the proposition. You are an asset or a liability to the participation or non-participation of your prospect, of your lead, of your guest, of your person who's just discovering this for the first time, of the person who just clicked on your link. You are either part of the problem or part of the solution. And here's what it sounds like when you're part of the solution. It sounds like confidence. It sounds like certainty. It sounds like here's somebody who's going somewhere. Now, we can get that message through a video, right? You don't have to necessarily come out and say, hey, folks, I'm going somewhere, although that could be kind of uh, comical, right? But you hear it in somebody's voice. You hear it in their, their mannerisms, you, the, the body language. Psychologists have said that 7% of communication is, uh, is the words that you speak, and the other 93% is physiology. That includes body language, facial expression, all that, right? So you can hear it between the lines. And you could have somebody with all the right words thinking they're going to fake it till they make it, but their subconscious dialogue, the message that's really being received by the public is, don't get started with me. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not confident. I'm hopeful. Hey, will you give me some money? Will you help me survive by, by signing up in my deal? Because I really need the sale. Now, that is pathetic. That's what, that's what the liability sounds like. So never forget this, my friends. Certainty sells. Certainty sells. So we can go right back to the year 1910, where Wallace D. Waddles, in his classic book, The Science of Getting Rich, wrote about doing things in a certain way, that two people engaged in the same business, even in the same town. One can get rich, but the other remains poor. Why? Because the one who gets rich does things in a certain way. And he said, in order to do things in a certain way, you must think in a certain way. What does he mean by this certain way? Right? I pondered this for a long time. I was like, what does this guy mean? The certain way. And uh, is it like some special way? Is it a specific way? I mean, how would he know? This is 1910. I'm, I'm doing online marketing. How could he tell me what the certain way is? So I got out the best self-help book ever written, which is the dictionary. And I looked up the word certain, because I apparently wasn't understanding what this guy was saying. And I looked up the word certain, and wouldn't you know it, one of the definitions around certain and, you know, other variations of that word was uh, uh, certainty, the absence of doubt. And I said, aha, that's the certain way. Now, you can't fake that, can you? And when you think about what we're doing here in this whole uh, top-tier direct sales, this whole entrepreneurship movement, what we're doing is we're enrolling others in a vision of their own greatness, their own ability to be, do, and have more than what they can get at their job. And again, not to demonize the job, but hey, every single one of you listening right now, including myself, because I'm listening to me too, and I'm always very interested to hear what I'm going to say, because I never know what it's going to be until it comes out of my mouth. Uh, but every single one of us have decided to reach above that. Okay, now, I can't fake this. <clears throat> you can't fake this, right? Every single person who's looking for a better way to, to get what they want out of life, right? They're looking for someone who knows that better way and who can show them that better way. That's the part you can't fake. And listen, my friends, no sane person would follow you into this business if you didn't know where you're going. The simplest definition of leadership that I can offer you, and again, that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about leading others to a better way. The simplest definition I can think of for you is that a leader is someone who knows where they are going. They have a self-determined destination. They have the only reason 
why any sane person would follow that. And I say sane person because there are insane people who will follow people who don't know where they're going. And we see it all the time. Not here, thank goodness, or I wouldn't be here. So the only reason somebody follows you is because you've got a predetermined destination, what I like to call a guaranteed future outcome. Now, does that, does that not reek of certainty and confidence? It does. It does. It exudes confidence. You know where you're going. Think about it like this. If you have a bunch of people standing around wondering where we should go for dinner, and one person says, oh, I heard about a decent restaurant. Uh, you know, they serve this food over there. Oh, I don't know. You know, there's this other place. And, oh, maybe we should go there. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And then you've got one person who, who yells out, oh, I know the best restaurant. It's right around the corner. You guys got to go there. They got the greatest uh, lasagna. Let's go to that restaurant. Everybody says, yes, let's do it. Let's go. Who's the leader? The person who knew where they were going and induced others to follow. That's leadership right there. Now, this is a pretty inconsequential example of leadership. Where should we eat tonight? Okay, that's not going to change anybody's life. Probably not. I don't know. Some, some other weird stuff could happen. But, uh, you know, in normal uh, daily living, that's not terribly consequential. Um, but you can see the mechanism that's in play here. There's one person in that group who knew where everybody should go. That person made a decision. Others followed that decision. So when we get into leadership, when we get into uh, this whole idea of leading and enrolling others, and yes, selling, selling people stuff. Nothing happens till somebody sells something. And I know that our industry is rife with people who have uh, a completely erroneous idea about what sales is and what marketing is. Like it's somehow manipulating others and tricking them into doing something not good for them. I mean, it is just mind-boggling, the nonsense and the misinformation that gets kicked around in the, the world of you know, home-based business and uh, network marketing and direct sales and all this where, where people will, will actively avoid being identified as you know, somebody who's involved in sales. <laughs> right? Sell is a four-letter word. Yeah, it's a, it's a four-letter word. It's a really good four-letter word. Right? So uh, we're going to rehabilitate that. We're going to help people get out of their own way because a lot of people are in their own way when it comes to sales and marketing. Now, you have to lead by example. Well, again, we're talking about leadership here, right? You're going to the place, the, to, the, to the restaurant that has the good lasagna, right? And people are following you. You did what? You induced decision in other people. You were decisive yourself, and you induced decision in other people. And I'm going to see if I can keep this uh, really, really uh, basic and, and digestible for everyone because, again, I've been studying philosophy for 30 years, and I can go into some deep rabbit holes. But I want this to be accessible for the person who just got started an hour ago. This is your first Black Diamond call. Fine. Welcome. Welcome. This is for you, too. Okay, so I don't want to give anybody a brain hernia here tonight. I give myself a brain hernia every now and then, you know, pondering the, the questions of life. Okay, but when we get into sales, salesmanship, decision-making, confidence, certainty, uh, all these things that I, that I brought up, being personally marketable, I want to distill it down to something you can take and embody and assimilate and put to use immediately. And again, I say you can't fake this, right? If you've heard fake it till you make it, throw that out. That is a bunch of nonsense. It does not work. Here's what works. Here's what works. Real sales. And I know that there are people here, let me just say this as a tangent. I know there are people here that just want to be on the marketing side, okay? But I will tell you, you could even read Kiyosaki's uh, one of Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad books. I know everybody here is uh, introduced to the, uh, the Cash Flow Quadrant. Well, he's got a whole series of books that he co-authored, or at least wrote the foreword to the book. And one of these uh, books is called uh, Sales Dogs, if I recall. I read it some years ago. And uh, he wrote in the, in the foreword to this book about how when he wanted to get into business, his rich dad uh, told him, well, go learn sales, right? Go get a sales job. That's one of the prerequisites for you to become successful in business. So even if you see your post as being, you know, the, the person who writes advertisement or the person who, um, you know, writes the emails and, you know, that's the only post you're going to man, right, still, even still, some salesmanship is in order here because somebody has to originate the, the, uh, the posting of the advertisement. Somebody has to originate the, you know, what you're writing in the email. So it all comes down to sales. Marketing, we could say, is the automation 
of the sales process. It's the front end of the sales process, but there still has to be an individual at the helm steering the ship. Someone is originating that thing that appears on the internet. When you go to that website and they see the advertisement or whatever you're seeing, there's a, a human being with a brain who originated that. Okay, people buy from people. Never forget this. Okay, so learn how to sell. And yes, we're talking about applying persuasive uh, uh, oratory or persuasive communication in one form or another to induce another person to make a decision, whether it's a decision to click on the, the advertisement, to go to the website, to opt in, to purchase the product, to purchase all the products, to upsell, to refer others, to become an affiliate, whatever. We're inducing decisions in other people who quite often have been averse to decision up to this point because decisions have been made for them. And you see what the results that, that has gotten them, right? If they were satisfied with their results, they wouldn't be looking at ways to earn more money or do whatever it is you're offering them, okay? So you've got a problem that already exists. That demand is already there. Now you're putting people's attention on the solution to that problem and you're doing it with salesmanship. So what exactly is sales? And there are whole books written on this. Okay, so I'm going to give you my favorite definition of sales, which I've pondered for some time. And I think it's one that we can all take and use. And uh, we can use it to great profit and to great effect. And I think it will, again, uh, rehabilitate uh, any, any misnomers, any misinformation about what business you're actually in, okay? I want to disabuse you of any errors that you may be encumbered with right now. Sales, my friends, is the transfer of enthusiasm. The transfer of enthusiasm. Here's what I mean. So you've got Joe Public. Joe Public is currently uh, doing whatever he does and getting whatever results he gets, and he's dissatisfied. He is dissatisfied. He does not know a better way. He is in what we could call a state of not knowingness or ignorance, right? He is in a state of ignorance about the fact that you and your opportunity exists. He knows not the benefits that could be his should he choose to participate in what you offer. And this is true for any, any sales, for any, we're talking about you're selling a product, you're selling a uh, service, an opportunity whatever, right? The public is ignorant to the fact that your solution exists. All they know is they've got a pain. They've got a problem to solve. Okay, now you show up with this solution, okay? And this is done through your marketing, okay? And this Joe Public goes through a process of what I would call enlightenment. He goes from the state of ignorance, not knowing this, and he gets to learn some stuff. So you're educating him through your materials, through your communication, through whatever it is you're putting forth into the marketplace, and he becomes more knowledgeable about these, these benefits that could be his. And uh, ultimately, he gets to a point where he has a shared enthusiasm. He now knows that this is a solution for him, and he chooses to participate. Now, did you not just transfer the enthusiasm, the knowingness that you had. Say he was ignorant before, but you've enlightened him, you see. Now he knows what you know to a larger degree. And because you know, you can be uh, enthusiastic about what you know, and now he could be more enthusiastic about it. In fact, if we look at the word enthusiasm, at least in the English language, the last four letters of this word are I-A-S-M. Anybody who's been through basic you know, sales training kind of seminars, you've probably heard this acronym before. Enthusiasm, the last four letters is I-A-S-M, which stands for I am sold myself. I am sold myself. Look, every single person here, you're, you're here, which means you, you bought it, you got started. Why? Why are you sold? What's so great about this digital altitude thing? What's so great about it? Do you know? Well, you, you know enough to at least have gotten started, right? So how do we transfer this enthusiasm? We transfer enthusiasm by transferring knowingness. I am sold myself. I know a lot more than Joe Public about these benefits that I get to experience, not only as a participant here with this business, but also as a customer, right? I am sold myself. And that's why I say, my friends, you cannot fake this. You can't go to the marketplace with a feigned enthusiasm, and we see this all the time, out in online marketing, and you know, here are people that are just running their mouth, 
and you could see right through it, at least I can because I've seen so much of this, this stuff, right? A feigned enthusiasm, right? I'd much rather have an authentic, unpolished enthusiasm than somebody who, who needs to try and convince me that it's party time or something, okay? If the truth isn't good enough, go sell something else. That's what I say, right? Please don't embellish. I hate hype, okay? Just me personally. I'm not a hype guy, right? I'd rather give real solutions and do it with a totally straight face because, you know, I'm very confident in what I'm offering. Okay, so, but here's the point. Here's why you can't fake this. Because they can't know if you don't know. You cannot give what you do not have, right? I can't augment your enthusiasm without having some to give you, right? And where does that enthusiasm come from? It comes from being sold myself, which means I know stuff. That means that I've gone through and I've looked at my offer and I've made the biggest sale that I could ever make, the biggest sale that I could ever make prior to doing my marketing. What is that sale? That is the selling it to myself. People ask me, John, how do you how did you become so so great in, in sales and public speaking and all this kind of stuff? I was like, well, you know, I, I sold it to me first before I ever went to market. Right? I'm I'm quite analytical. I I I, I study. I'm I'm one of these people who reads every word of the instruction manual when I buy a new you know piece of electronics or something right I want to I want to get every last drop of, of benefit out of that uh, that investment I just made and that new you know device or whatever it happens to be right uh, and I want to uh, to do things properly I like order I like order yes I like when things work right I like success I like that stuff and so I tend to pay attention to details and because of that I've, I've done what? I've loaded my guns. I know so much about my own offer before I ever offer it to anybody else. I sell it to me because like I said before, if the truth isn't good enough, go sell something else. And look, I have to say no again and again and again and again to lots of different things across my desk. You know, being in this industry for as long as I have, I get offers every single day, my goodness, every single day, all day. All day. I have how many emails in my inbox that I haven't even opened yet? 97 from today that I haven't even opened yet. Okay? And I, no, 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 no. Why do you think I'm here with digital altitude? And I'm not, I'm not setting myself up as, you know, the, the litmus test. You know, like if, if John likes it, then it's good. And if John doesn't like it, then it's bad. No, there's lots of, lots of good things that you could do, right? Lots of great stuff. Uh, you know, and there's lots of things that, that I could do, but you know what? I already run, you know, my own companies. I'm like really, really busy. Like I'm not just saying I'm busy. I'm like really busy. So there has to be something special about digital altitude for me to be here putting uh, time in here as opposed to all the other things I could be doing. Perhaps that's relevant for you. Well, for me it certainly is because I'm me. Okay? So uh, you could use that sort of as a, as a barometer, but you yourself made your own decision to be here. Right? So why? Here's the big question. Why did you decide to be here? Where are you going with this? What is your guaranteed future outcome? What is the point of differentiation in terms of your offer, your offer being the digital altitude offer that you're going into the marketplace with? Why is this so great? Why should I join? If I was your prospect right now, never mind all the, the technology, the videos, the emails, and everything else, and you were sitting down with me right now across the table, and I said, why should I join right now? Why should I buy this right now? From you, right now, what are you going to say? You should have a whole list of reasons why. This is the right company. This is the right product line. This is the right opportunity. This is the right team, the coaching platform, you yourself as a sponsor, uh, all, all the different things that you can, you can list as assets. And then once you've got all those assets, what we can call features listed out, you can then say to yourself, okay, again, we're just talking about you selling yourself. We can then say, uh, well, why should I care? So I'm sitting across the table from Joe Public, and here are all my features. Here are all the assets that I have inside this, this offer that I'm going to make to Joe Public. And why should Joe care? Why does he care? And answer every single, ask that question of every single feature. Okay? So we've got, uh, let's say, the, you know, the Aspire uh, coaches, right, that are here. Why should I care? Well, I'll tell you why you should care, Joe Public. It's because in so many businesses, you've got people who are uh, just coming in and they're just being clobbered with information. They've got to man every post. They've got to wear 10 different hats. They never get out of their own way. They're completely overwhelmed. Here, you've got people of vast experience who can do virtually everything in the back end. You get to man one post, 
and that is the post of marketer. You get to wear one hat, the marketing hat, and we'll even teach you how to do it. And you know what? There are people who are way better at doing these other things, and thank goodness they do, and they like doing them, because you and I don't have to do them. Nor do we want to learn, nor do we have the time to learn. We can get to the dollars faster. And that's why this coaching program exists, not to mention the side benefits of actually creating orderliness and systemization, which is what people allegedly say they want, right? They want stuff to work, right? So we've got something that can work. Oh, and by the way, it's all based on experience of people who've already made eight figures doing this, right? So you get to ride on the coattails of experienced people, right? Does that sound like a time saver to you, Joe? Would you like to save time? Would you like to eliminate guesswork, Joe? Thank you. Thank you. Sign up here, right? So that's just one example. Why should I care? If you can answer that question for each feature, then you come up with a benefit. This is salesmanship, and you've got to sell it to yourself first. At least that's what I've done. And because I now have a greater level of knowingness about what features are in the offer and why should I care, because I know what the benefits are, and now I'm sold myself, I can now transfer that higher level of knowingness to another person. And since I am sold myself, well, I know stuff, now they can know stuff too. You see, you can't give what you don't have. If I didn't know, now they can't know. This may be their only shot. Think about this. Your, your uh, prospect, the person who just opts in as a lead and is wondering, you know, if this is real or if you'll help me or if this works, right, this might be their only shot before they crawl under a rock and, you know, submit to a life of concession and I guess I'm just going to die broke and be an employee my whole life. This might be their only shot. Are you the leader they're looking for? I really hope so. I really, for, for their sake, I really hope so. Again, you can't fake this. This is big, this is big stuff. And because I put that much attention and heart into the, the process of selling, okay, and it is a process, it's not an event, right? People who are, you're into marketing right now, you see, there are people that opt in, oh, they didn't buy on first contact. Imagine that. No, sales is a, is a process, it's not an event. You're cultivating a list. You're cultivating a relationship with that list. You're building trust and credibility in the marketplace. This takes time, time. You see people who are top earners. They, they come in. They get started. 90 days later, they just made their first 100 grand, right? They've been cultivating a relationship with a list. They've been building trust and credibility in the marketplace. This is the investment that real professional marketers and real professional salespeople make, right? So when they have an offer, they are an asset to that potential transaction, and people believe them. They are predisposed and pre-motivated to saying yes. Does not happen by accident. Does not happen by chance or luck. <clears throat> it, it happens through discipline. It happens through building yourself as an asset to the transaction. So again, I'll say you're either part of the problem or part of the solution. Now this brings me to the second point that I wanted to share with everyone tonight, and it's one that will uh, do two things at once. Number one, it will increase your confidence. And number two, it will, uh, it will eliminate a lot of the uh, unworthy fear that people experience when they, they venture off into entrepreneurship. Does that sound appealing to anyone? If so, you can go ahead and type it in the chat roll, although I can't see the chat roll while I'm talking. I get into my own zone, so I can't type back to you. <laughs> I'm not a multitasker. Okay, but <clears throat> if that's appealing to you, let me know. If you'd like to increase your confidence, and decrease fear, things that hold people back. So here's, we're gonna kill two birds with one stone right here. And I, I was talking about this with a couple of students here today. And this is right out of a book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Okay, has anyone heard of that book? Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. One of the quintessential classics of literature, probably the most influential book on, uh, on wealth creation ever written. Okay, millions and millions of, of copies in print, and it is now out of copyright, because it was uh, published in 1936, copyrights last for 70 years, and so you can go grab a free copy online if you don't have a copy of this book. I personally read the original text, the original text, which was re-released um, because there's a mass market version, and I like to get the ideas just exactly the way the author wrote them. That's important to me. I like to get unfiltered thoughts right from the uh, right from the author anyway in this book the, the last chapter is the six ghosts of fear this is the epilogue it's the last chapter in the book 
The Six Ghosts of Fear, where Napoleon Hill talks about the fears that uh, entangle men. Okay, these are like, uh, you know, fear of old age, fear of ill health, fear of death, fear of poverty, right? And he talks about, throughout the book, he talks about uh, decision making, right? He has a whole chapter on decision. And uh, that's one of his 13 principles that have helped, uh, you know, people become wildly successful. This book was written based on the experiences of the uh, most successful people of the Industrial Revolution. Uh, Napoleon Hill was, for those who don't know, he was a student of Andrew Carnegie, the first billionaire. Okay, so uh, Carnegie uh, introduced Napoleon Hill to a bunch of his friends, you see, guys like Henry Ford and uh, William Wrigley and this uh, wacky inventor guy in New Jersey named uh, Tom Edison, right? So these are the people that Napoleon Hill studied. And in this, uh, this idea that he shares about uh, the six ghosts of fear, notice that he's calling them ghosts, because what we're really talking about is a misuse of your own energy, right? It's your energy that produces the fear. Okay, but in this uh, chapter, he talks about decisiveness. Okay, and I want to read you something right out of, uh, right out of the, the, the chapter on uh, decision. Listen to this. Listen to this. This is really, really strong. Second uh, paragraph, chapter 7, decision. Procrastination, the opposite of decision, is a common enemy which practically every individual must conquer. Procrastination, the opposite of decision, is a common enemy which practically every individual must conquer. Now, later in the book, in the Six Ghosts of Fear, in the epilogue, he talks about procrastination is what causes people to doubt themselves. Procrastination produces the doubt. And then he says the doubt crystallizes into fear. And, of course, fear is crippling. I don't think any intelligent action comes from a fearful mind. Okay? So, thinking about this, what is the real root cause of the fear? Procrastination. What is the opposite of procrastination? I already read it to you. It's decision. Therefore, my friends, procrastination and indecision are one and the same. Indecision is the enemy which virtually everyone must face. Now, later in the, the chapter on, on decision, he says this, and I'll just, I'll just quote this for you because it's a, a, a heavily, heavily quoted uh, paragraph out of, uh, out of this book. And it's one that I think applies to everyone in this business. So listen closely. It says here, analysis of several hundred people who had accumulated fortunes well beyond the million dollar mark, and that's back when a million dollars meant something, okay? Uh, but it, it re disclosed the fact. I'll start the whole sentence over so I don't screw it up. Analysis of several hundred people who had accumulated fortunes well beyond the million dollar mark disclosed the fact that every one of them had the habit of reaching decisions promptly and of changing these decisions slowly if and when they were changed. People who fail to accumulate money without exception have the habit of reaching decisions if at all very slowly and of changing these decisions quickly and often. Changing these decisions quickly and often. What is that? That is indecision. That's what that is. Indecision. So what is your value as a person who is inducing decision in others? What is your value as a salesperson, as a marketer, as someone who's putting forth an opportunity for people to be, do, and have more in their life? You're inducing a new decision in another person. Like I said before, when it comes to sales and the transfer of enthusiasm, which is actually the transfer of knowingness, and you can't give what you do not have, do you think you can induce decision in another person without being decisive yourself? You see where we're going with this? Do you see the leadership factor in all this? Do you see how you can either be part of the problem or part of the solution? with people that just by virtue of the fact that you being a, a decisive person, not only are you pulling out fear by the root, because remember, it's that procrastination, also known as indecision, which causes doubt, which crystallizes into fear. So if we just get decisive, well, there's the antidote to fear right there. But at the same time, while we're decisive, are we not also in action, because all decision is followed by action, all decision is followed by action. If no action, well, then no decision, right? To know and not to do is not to know. To decide but not to act is to have not decided, right? You decided 
to, to participate in this call today. And sure enough, you're here. Had you not made that decision, you would not be on this call. Right? You would not be listening to my voice. So action follows decision. You'll know that you made a decision because you'll see yourself moving. You'll be doing stuff. Right? Now, because you've made a decision, because you're taking action, have you not also started to build confidence in your ability to take those actions? You see this? Not only are we uprooting fear, but at the same time, we're building confidence. It's even something that, that is just totally subjective, like uh, what I talked about before, like making a list of features and benefits of why your offer is so great, why you're so great, why is digital altitude so great, why is all this stuff great, why did you buy it, right? Even just taking that action, decide to take that action, take the actual action, and then you will see that you are more confident in your ability to take inventory of features and benefits of a particular offer. You will have grown in confidence because you will have taken that action. Uh, somebody who's uh, uh, right now learning how to ski, right? We've got two, two feet of snow hitting the mountain right now as we speak, okay? People are going to be up there tomorrow morning with their ski boots on, and some of those people are going to be newbies, man. They don't even know how to stand up on the skis. But by tomorrow night, when they come off the mountain, they will have increased their confidence and their ability to ski. They will not suck as bad. And then they'll show up again, and then they'll show up next weekend, and then they'll have their Christmas vacation. And by the end of the season, they'll be skiing. Their confidence will have uh, increased. Their fear will have decreased. But none of it was possible without their decision to get on the mountain. That's where it starts. When I say decision, I'm talking about a cutting off point. We go back to the Latin root of that word. It's decidere. Decidere means to cut off from. To cut off from. That's what a decision is. It's a cutting off point. It's not a whimsical thing. It's not something you go back and forth on. You don't waffle. You don't drift. It's a cutting off point. And when you come into a business like this and you say, I will earn a six-figure income, a seven-figure income, $20,000 a month, $50,000 a month, whatever your goal is, when you decide that you will not be denied that, you start to move differently. You start to occur differently in the marketplace. You're not here hoping that it will work. You're not here trying not to fail. You're here to win. And you're here to help other people win and take as many people who are willing to listen with you as you can. You're here to empower people starting with you and anyone who's looking to get on the path. And they've got a reason to get on the path because you're on the path and you know you're going somewhere. You don't just hope. You don't just believe. You know you're going somewhere. That's the only reason why any sane person would follow you. Now, that sort of resolve, that sort of decision, that cutting off point speaks so much louder than words. You can say less to more people. You'll have people who get started with you who you may have never suspected. And next thing you know, you've got influence in the marketplace. Next thing you know, you're known in the marketplace because you put yourself out there. You decided to create content, uh, video, uh, emails, articles, social media posts, whatever. right? And because you actually made a decision, because you cut yourself off, from all those other possibilities, like sitting around, waiting for later, thinking about it, trying, not trying, not sure, I don't know what to do, right? Because you just did it. You increased your confidence, you overcame your fear, and you get to reap the, the profits of that moving forward in the marketplace. So it takes some guts, right? It's not just, hey, I, I showed up here and, you know, I'm going to Oh, get out of my own way because i got nothing better to do. No, no, you're leaving the street corner. It's scary. You're venturing into the realm of the unknown, which is where your goals lie. They do not exist in the realm of the known, or it you, you wouldn't be goals anymore. They'd be knowns, right? They'd be uh, accomplishments, okay? You're looking to reach further. So this decisiveness, this cutting off point, this is so valuable, not just for you, but for anyone you encounter, anyone who's lucky enough to find your advertisement and click the link and opt in. It should be happy days for them, but only you can decide if that's going to be happy days. Now, here's how it shows up. It shows up as that confidence and that certainty, right? Whether we're talking about they read your email and a powerful per person wrote it. You wrote it. Or they, they watched your video and a powerful person shot that video. You, you did. You shot that video. Here's, here's the, the contra to that uh, would be, oh, I, I hope this is going to work. Let me just go fake it now. Let me uh, go try and look confident. 
on a video. Let me go try and transfer enthusiasm that I don't even have because I don't even know. You cannot give what you do not have, right? People can see right through that. People get started with you because you know they know you know because you know where you're going and you're able to transfer something some of that knowingness, yes, some of that enthusiasm to other people. But you've got to cut yourself off from failure from any other possibility. Remember, decision to cut off from. You've got to cut yourself off from the possibility of failure. You've got to, to be able to scream if you have to at the mirror, I will not be denied. I will succeed at this or I will be dead. One or the other. I will not be denied. That's it. I accept only victory. It's like Napoleon Bonaparte said. He said, I see only my objective. The obstacles must give way. That's the kind of resolve that you approach success with. I'm not telling you to be like Napoleon Bonaparte. He wasn't a very nice guy. But he knew about resolve. And he knew about decisions. Okay? And so did every other person that Napoleon Hill studied. Different Napoleon now. Napoleon Hill, who wrote They Can Grow Rich. Every person he studied was decisive. Henry Ford was known to be an obstinate guy. Right? And this guy just persisted forever. He would not give up. Thomas Edison, 10,000 failures to make a light bulb. Okay? Employing a whole staff of scientists to fail day in and day out, one failure after another, right? And then guess what? Finally, they got it, right? He would not be denied. We will have a light bulb, damn it. I am tired of candles and hot oil lamps. I want a light bulb. Let's put this electricity to use. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, sir. I'm enjoying your work right now. <laughs> you see how valuable you can be in the marketplace when you make decisions? about who you are, where you're going, you sell it to yourself, man, it's so easy to induce others who are looking for a better way. It's so easy to induce a decision in others who are, who are ready for a better way, when you yourself know you're on a better path. That's what I'm getting at here. But it sounds like confidence. It does not sound like I'm trying to not fail. That is pathetic. That is part of the problem. And you will, I'll tell you what, the only reason anybody would get started with you at that point is because they, they need counseling. Yes, they need counseling. Yes, even a blind squirrel can eventually find a nut. Okay, but that's not why you're here. You're here to be powerful and to empower others. And I say, and this is why I wrote my first book, uh, Integrity is Everything, I, I'm looking to rehabilitate. This is my personal mission, and, and this is all part of your unique selling proposition, by the way, is to come up with your own uh, personal mission or, or what we could say a purpose in life, right, really is what we get down to it. Part of what we do with our life, a lot of what we do with our life is our work, right? What, what, are we, what legacy are we leaving here? What, what improvements are we making in our time here on the planet? Well, well, a big part of mine is to increase prosperity and prosperity consciousness for as many people as I can touch. And I do that through rehabilitating some of what I believe is a, a lost art of self-reliance and, and personal integrity. Right? What do you want? Are you willing to go for it? You know, you can have as much money and uh, financial independence as you're willing to be responsible for. Again, that's a decision. Th this whole idea of financial freedom and, you know, financial liberty, all that goes hand in hand with personal responsibility. Again, I'll get back to what Ralph Emerson called the law of laws. He said the law of laws is cause and effect. Right? Back to the idea of uh, employee versus entrepreneur. Right? Or we could say consumer versus producer. Two different mindsets. What we're talking about is cause versus effect. Right? And there are times to be a consumer. We go to the store. We buy something. Yes, I'm a consumer. I'm in the consumer mindset. Hopefully, I'll find a, a, a qualified salesperson to save me some time and help me make a decision. Yes, help me make a decision. Save me time, please. Thank you. Right? Sell me something. Please. A competent salesperson. I love them. They're awesome. Uh, so now that's the time to be the consumer. But in your, your business, you damn well better be the producer. You damn well better be the cause and not the effect. And again, that's not to say you can't learn and model what other people have done. I mean, my goodness, here's the RISE program. Here's our Wednesday night uh, RISE trainings. Here's uh, all the, the training you get through our traffic coaches and on and on. Everything you're going to receive at the Ascend and the Peak and the Apex events. Fantastic. Consume that data. Consume it. Wonderful. Now, put, please, put it to use and go be the producer. Uh, whenever you're consuming, you're the effect. 
when I'm reading Napoleon Hill's book, I'm the effect of what he thinks. But then I've got to put it to use in my life and be the cause, be the producer, be the entrepreneur, be the person who's making stuff happen. Because look, Napoleon Hill's truth only serves Napoleon Hill. And he's dead, man. He's not even on the planet anymore. So what do I got here? I got a book. I got a pile of paper with some ink on it. It's worthless. To him, now to me, what's it worth? Well, to the degree that I can use it for profit in my life, in my relationships, in my uh, everything. I mean, riches can be defined as lots of different things. Yes, money, but health, happiness, fitness, you know, whatever. Uh, to the extent that I can put these things to use and be more causative in my life, take more control and, yes, more responsibility in my life because I've learned some things, you see. I'm no longer ignorant. I can now, well, I'm ignorant in, in lots of areas, okay, but, but in things that I've, I've developed an aptitude for because I had an interest in these things, like marketing and business, that's a pretty good thing to get interested in, right, because I've, I've taken the responsibility and I've accepted the responsibility, which was always mine, by the way, I've accepted the responsibility to be more causative in this area, I get to have more control, what we call freedom. Yes, I am no longer the effect. I am more and more at cause over these situations in my life. Now, when it comes to other things, yes, I'm very much the effect, right? You can't be all things to all people. Uh, like uh, Peter McWilliams said in his, uh, I think, excellent book, uh, Do It. The name of the book is Do It. He talked about um, uh, this idea that you, you can't have everything in life. You can't have everything that you want, which flies in the face of a lot of these, you know, self-help authors, you know, that tell you, you could have everything, right? Just, uh, you know, wish upon a star or something. Uh, no, you can't have everything you want. But you can have anything you want. Interesting distinction that Peter uh, made there. You can't have everything, but you can have anything. You just got to pick what those things are. So pick what those things are. Make a decision. Cut yourself off from any other outcome. This is the level of resolve that it took for me and that it still takes for me if I'm going to make progress in my life. I'm not done. I haven't arrived. Does anybody see me levitating outside of their window right now? Or, or manifesting fish and loaves or something. No, no, I, I haven't arrived. I'm still learning this stuff too. <laughs> so, but I'll tell you the big leap, the big leap from not just bum on the street, which I practically was as a youth, uh, to productive member of society, the bigger leap from productive you know, employee to successful entrepreneur, it came through this level of resolve, this level of decision this level of never turning back and of uh, becoming powerful in my use of thought to the extent that I was sold myself and that when other people were fortunate enough to find my advertisement and to get me on the phone or, or however the communication happened, uh, they were fortunate enough to talk with me, they instantly knew they were talking to somebody who knew that where they were going. Even before I had made a penny, before I had made a penny in my enterprise, they knew they had somebody who knew that where they were going. And that speaks way louder than faking it and, hey, look at my rented Lamborghini or something and all the other nonsense you see on, on the Internet. It speaks way louder. You'll attract the right people, but you've got to first be the right person. Am I making a point? I hope I am. I thought this was going to be a short call. I'm going to just give a couple of points and 20 minutes and we'll open it up. It'll be a brief one. It is 59 minutes. We are 59 minutes in. My mouth runneth over. Imagine if I had notes. Man, we could talk for hours and hours, could we? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open it up for Q&A, and uh, I appreciate you all uh, dealing with me, <laughs> bearing the, uh, you know, the, uh, the fruits of my brain. Um, so here we go. We're going to go into Q&A mode. And, uh, and so I, I welcome your, your participation. I, I see that, uh, that we've got you know, a bunch of people online uh, right now. I think people are still uh, perhaps sobering up from the weekend or something. We had a nice uh, Thanksgiving weekend here in uh, the States. And uh, so I think a lot of people may uh, be listening to this on recording. But if you're here live right now, then you've got a, a red carpet if you'd like to click star six and uh, raise your hand and we can have a little uh, interaction and uh, if you've got any questions or any ideas you'd like to share on this topic, this topic of, of leadership, decisiveness, uh, salesmanship, yes, persuasion, this is what we're talking about here tonight. Inducing others to participate in something that's good and right for them, but you know it first. 
Okay, if you'd like to discuss this, uh, feel free to uh, to go ahead and raise your hand. Interestingly, I, I don't see I don't see any hands. So if you guys want, we can just wrap up the call. It's exactly one hour. We could be done. I'll give one last uh, one last opportunity. If you're uh, tuning in live and you'd like to uh, speak, you are welcome to do so. And one last call. And no takers. I do see a bunch of people in the chat roll. I want to thank everybody for uh, your participation in the chat roll tonight. And we're going to go ahead and wrap up the call with that. Thank you again. And uh, look, we're going to be back here tomorrow morning with everyone on the wake-up call with our friend Tatiana Moshenkov. Always a pleasure to be here with everyone in the morning for our, our brief calls, our uh, you know 15 minutes or so. In the meantime, see how these ideas, like I said before, see how, how these ideas can apply to you and how you can be more influential in the marketplace and as a person who's a marketer and, yes, a salesperson and a person who's providing benefit for other people because you know what those benefits are and you're putting them out into the marketplace with full certainty that it will bear fruit for yourself and for anyone who chooses to walk this path of entrepreneurship with you. Thanks again, my friends. I will see you tomorrow and make it a great day. Bye for now.